Hi, beauties. So what's up? I'm Courtney Kaysen, and I'm going to be hanging out with you today on Beauty IQ's Facebook. It's all about Makeup Monday, where we tell you to tune in around four-ish on Mondays. The way that I look at it is nobody's really motivated on Mondays to be in a hurry because you still have four more days of work. You're like, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm here for another hour until you go home. And so we like to say, take a little happy hour, hang out with us on Makeup Mondays, because what we're going to do every Monday from here on out is talk to you about the trends that you see in Instagram editorials and show you the products that we use along with tips and tricks from your favorite experts on how to achieve those looks. So today is going to be all about a metallic eye. And I know a lot of you have seen it on the runways. Sometimes it's really bold. It's really flashy, which is awesome. But you think to yourself, okay, how am I going to wear that for the everyday? And what does that mean for the rest of my makeup routine? So courtesy of the Bobby Brown team, which we have to give a huge shout out for today, they've got an incredible collection of metallic eyeshadows. And so I'm going to show you how to really create a day to night look, whether it's Monday through Friday or it's fun days like Saturday and Sunday. So if you want to click the link in the post, that'll actually take you to the Bobby Brown shop because by the way, we've got amazing new eyeliners. We've got some lipsticks that you haven't seen before and there you'll also be able to shop your favorite colors in the metallic eyeshadows. I'll also encourage you that if you want to ask questions, I am basically the beauty IQ test dummy. So I'm trying this out for the first time along with you. I may make mistakes. You may tell me to go back and try something a different way. So please hang out with us, ask questions, but I hope you guys are having a good day. All right, so let's get started. One of the reasons that I chose metallic eyes for this week's tutorial is I feel like a lot of places in the country, while it's still a little hot outside, you're definitely starting to see some of the leaves change and you're getting into that fall mindset. And really because I think about the fact that I don't do as much shopping in the fall, um, because I buy investment pieces, I'm thinking, well, how do we change up our wardrobe? And that's how a lot of you are. I mean, if you think about your fashion wardrobe, some of your best pieces come in fall and you're like, oh, I never want to get rid of that. I've got that great leather jacket. I've got that amazing dress. What can I wear with it? And so when we continue to see over the summer this trend of natural glossy eyes where you were just taking one product, little any shadow, but you had this natural looking twinkle, I became totally obsessed. I wore it every single day and I was like, man, what am I gonna do when it comes time for fall? Because I'm gonna wanna add more color, but I definitely like the shine, I like the brilliance, and I love the textures of the shadow. So, I went searching through beautyiq.com and that's where I found some really great metallic shades from Bobbi Brown. So I'll kind of just hold these up just so you guys can see. They're the kind of metallics that they're not too sparkly. They've got the right amount of luster to them. And I think that when you wear them, it's definitely a showstopper because you don't have to be an expert to try to use them, but you can use them and build them to however deep or intense that you like. So if anything about metallics on the runway or with fashion taught me anything, it's an extremely sophisticated look, but it's also very artistic. And I think what excites me about that is I'm not a makeup artist. You probably are not either. So let's build a little look. And please be reminded, if you have any questions, my friend Kelly's here to answer them for you or ask me, love to help you out. So when you start with a metallic eye, I actually pulled two different shades. These are not metallic. These are just great basics from Bobbi's collection. We've got wheat and we've got taupe. I'm actually going to use both of these to build a transition shade. So your transition shade is basically from above the crease in the middle right here. So I'm not, I don't have anything on my brush, but just so you can see, you're gonna, we call it swooping on Beauty IQ. You're just gonna swoop, 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 swoop. And what that does is so that the lines of eyeshadow are not so stark as you start building up. So I'm gonna grab the taupe, which is the deeper of the two shades. And I pulled wheat just to show you, based on what color your skin tone is, either of these are a great option. So, build that. Start building in. I love how blendable her shadows are. Because this is one of those two. I'm using the taupe. If for some reason you thought it was too dark for your skin tone, or you're thinking, I don't understand how it's going to blend in later, you could always go shade lighter. 
And by the way, I already have my foundation on my face as well as a little bit concealer and then obviously my brows. I just wanted to get that out of the way because that's not our focus for today, even though Bobby makes incredible foundations. And truth be known, normally when I use transition shades, I would say using the wheat, I wouldn't normally go this dark, and it's by no stretch of the means dark. I mean, you can see it right here. But since I'm doing more of a metallic eye and the ones that I pulled are a little more bronzy and rosy, I want it to pop. So here's the wheat. And then up next, I'm actually gonna take a blush. This is called Tawny. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's a perfect balance blush. Really easy to incorporate, and it's one of those you can use on your lids, you can use on your cheeks, really anywhere. Do we have a question? How we might have a question. How do we stop your eyeshadow from falling under your eyes? All right, how do we stop our eyeshadow from falling underneath our eyes? Couple of answers I'm gonna give you here, and I hope that you love all of them because I use them all throughout the week. Uh, some makeup artists will tell you, you should start with your eyes first, because if you have fallout, what you can do, and I'm just gonna grab one of these Purity Made Simple Wipes, is when you start with your eyeshadow first, that gives you permission, especially if you're not an artist, or you're trying something out for the first time, if it gets all over your face, you can just wipe it away, and then you'd apply your foundation and concealer over it. So you could be as messy as you wanted to, just make sure your eyeshadow is your first step. If you are somebody who starts with their foundation first um, and concealer and whatnot and you like to build a face, there's two reasons I like to do that first. One, especially when you're contouring, adding blush and highlighter, it really sets the tone for what you want your eyeshadow to look like. So if it's a little more bold, maybe you want to go a little lighter on the eyes and vice versa, if it's a little bit softer, it allows you to build a bolder eye and you kind of have the basis of your complexion done so you can work along with it. I will also say what helps, you know, not with um, eyeshadow fallout is really great brushes and obviously a really great product, so. We have Tiffany in the comments from Peter Thomas Rock. She <gasps> Tiffany! Also says that, um, the PTR eye patches. Oh, PTR eye patches are legit. I actually used the 24 karat gold today because I don't know what happened this weekend, but I was like, man, my skin looks so dehydrated. So under eyes on fleek, courtesy of Tiffany Bucciarelli and of course, Peter Thomas Roth. So I'm gonna take this blush, as I think I mentioned just momentarily. So this is the Tawny. And normally I wouldn't put blush on my eyes, but with the colors that I pulled, I want the metallics to have this rosy, undertone and to me this is perfectly balanced so what I'm gonna do is apply this directly under my transition state so it'll be a little bit on the top part of my lid but it's not gonna go all the way down so I actually can borrow this and by the way I'm using a fluffier brush and I'm gonna continue to use this while I'm doing the transition and popping on the blush tone. Because it's really flexible with the pigment and so if you put it on too strong, one place it's not a big deal, this brush and the um, eyeshadow move really well together. Thanks, Danielle! All right, so. You can kind of see from the transition, you've got this great neutral color, and this is kind of just lining the lids and blending out to the lightness that is right beneath my brows. And then you can kind of see that I've started blending in the blush from that transition, probably about halfway down my lids. So that's that. So two colors so far. And always remember, especially if you're somebody that's using the same brush, because I totally recognize that people don't do their makeup with about 40 different brushes like I have here, just grab a makeup wipe and just make sure that you get the excess powder off just so you get the true pigments on your lids and complexion. So coming up next, I'm gonna grab two of the metallics and start with cognac. So cognac's the darker color and I'm obsessed with how deep this color is. And depending on the light, what's really pretty about this is it almost has like a 
aubergine hue to it, just a little bit. But to me, that's what adds to the pigment so well is the fact that you are able to get this beautiful bronzy brown color and then you're like, wait a second, there's another layer of color here, which I really adore. So for this one, I'm gonna grab more of a flat brush to apply this because I'm only applying to the lid. So I'm gonna grab this mirror and I'm gonna go all the way across the lid. And I'm just patting it in. And what's nice about that is because I'm patting this in, I'm now blending it from my lash line into, I think it was Tawny, which is the blush color. So you can see how it almost looks like a smoky eye, but when we get up really close, you're gonna see that it's gonna have an amazing metallic hue to it. And I'm even gonna show you how to take it up a notch from day to night as well. A little secret from Kapari Coconut Oil. So, blend in. And just light little pats. I'm not sure if we can zoom in or not to my eye, but I'll show you, this has such wonderful moving properties. Because a lot of times when you pat eyeshadow in, it's kind of stuck in one spot. Sandra wants to know what brushes you're using. Sandra, what brushes am I not using? I will tell you this. I am a hoarder of two things in my life, makeup and shoes. Specifically in the makeup category, brushes. Every year for Christmas, I'm like, ooh, can I have a new makeup brush? If you were to look down right here, this is only half of my collection at work, which is alarming. So I would say easily, I probably have 30 brushes here in my house locker. There's probably another 30. And then at my house, I just display them as if I were a painter of wonderful things aside from stick figures, and they are to paint my face. So I would say in, in real life, like when I tell my best friends, they're like, why do you have so many makeup brushes? I'm like, well, have you seen my face? Um, but I would say, honestly, you can probably get away with about seven different brushes. So I would say grab a really great angled brush for blush, grab a foundation brush, have one for concealer, and just a few for eyeshadow, and then one dedicated for brows and for liner. So I hope that helps. Because it can get out of control real quick. But I know that I'm not alone in this because all of my makeup friends probably have 300 brushes in each station and the QVC salon. So. Take that for what it's worth. And great questions, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on Makeup Monday. This is all about teaching you tips and tutorials and really just kind of honing in on what's, toning, what's trending in the world of beauty because we can all participate, which is awesome, and we can all interpret it our own way. All right, so that is the cognac which I've got three layers on. So you started with the transition, which was taupe. Then we used blush, which was tawny, which went underneath. And then we used the darker color, cognac, from Bobbi's Metallic Eyeshadow Collection. And I'll just show you what that looks like one more time. And it takes very little. So I have every confidence in the world in telling you that these eyeshadows will probably last you forever, which is great, because you want your makeup to be an investment. All right, so I'm just gonna double back this time because I'm thinking, all right, what happens if it's a little too dark or what happens if I'm a little messy with my brush application? You can always go back and fix your transition. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more this time of the lighter color, which is wheat. So you see that right there? It's kind of like a perfect shade. And I'm just gonna fill that in a little more to the side my eyes are becoming wonderfully metallic. All right, so last step of this, actually I should say there's two more steps. So I'm gonna grab the lighter shade, which is Burnt Sugar. Love that, and I'm just gonna dust this in the middle of my eyes. Just to get some more dimension. Because the thing that we want with metallic eyes is you don't want them to be too shiny. You want them to make a statement, which we're gonna do, but you wanna do it in the most sophisticated way possible, and that's what I love about these metallic shadows. We're not gonna see you from across the room and be like, holy mackerel, holy mackerel. My 13-year-old niece, that's my shadow she would wear. Not for me, not for you. 
you want to be able to take this to date night. Or you want to be able to wear your investment pieces, maybe to work, maybe to happy hour, and still feel like you fit in and be noticed for incredible colors, but not standing out too much. Oh, you know what? I don't even think I told you what brand more so than I just got so deeply personal about me hoarding makeup brushes. Glad you asked. I love Tarte brushes. I love Mally brushes. And then It Cosmetics, um, all of which are, like this is a Tarte one and it's double-ended. I would say for those of you who um, don't have a lot of makeup brushes, when you go to beautyiq.com, look for ones especially when it's eyeshadow related to get one that's dual end. One, it's about the same price as a singular brush, but two, it's just really helpful in space saving and then obviously different tricks that you can do with your eyeshadow. But this is Tarte. This one I used for the transition was Mally. And then uh, the other fluffy one that I used was from Smashbox. So I think Mally, It Cosmetics, Tarte, and then Laura, there's a Laura Geller one in there too. So yeah, everything but Smashbox. And if you want, I can pick out a couple and post them to my Facebook page and say these are a few of my favorite things. Um, all right, so I just did the last layer of the metallic eye, and that was with burnt sugar. So just tell me, guys, I'm going to close my eyes for a little bit just so you can see the up-close kind of dimension that I'm creating because I'm going to add one more element to it. I think that you can still do a smoky eye if you have deep set eyes, and I will tell you what I'm thinking. And this is Patricia who asked this. Trisha. Trisha. Hi, Trisha. It's good to see you here. Um, I will say if you have deep set eyes, one of the things that can be really great is if you discover how to use transitions. This is my personal opinion, but I see enough women throughout Beauty IQ and in our salon to kind of see how our makeup artists do. Grab a brush like this so that you can see that it's really fluffy, but also it holds on to product, but you can add as little or as, um, as much as you like. But when you use this, use your transition shade, because if you have deep set eyes, you probably have a little bit of hoodiness, which I'm not sure, I'll have to take a look at your picture. But what you wanna do is where, the, where it starts to go concave, take this brush, and just get slightly beneath the brow bone. Having that very faint color will then allow you on your lids to do bolder colors that don't look like they are so stark. Because when you close your eyes, because we can't really see dimension from far away, it'll look like a perfectly blended smoky eye. So take that transition from where your crease starts to where your brow bone is and find it where you can see it. Don't make the whole eye, you know, this transition color. Still re leave room for a lighter shade underneath your brow bone, but just take that little one and then you'll build your, your smoky eye, go from dark all the way to light. And I always like to do my smoky eyes dark, medium, light. So with metallics, it's a little bit different, but I hope that helps you. I wish we had DVR on some of these questions because sometimes I'm like, I can't believe I said that. When I'm like, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. So hopefully you can record that. Tracy and Mark said great Yay! Hey, Mar. Hey, Tracy. Thanks, girls, for hanging out. All right. Last part of this, and then I'll show you even more close up. I'm going to take a tinier brush, and just um, from like the Tarte highlighting palette, I'm going to go. I'm going to do a combo of spotlight and candlelight just on the corners of my eyes to kind of lighten it up just a little bit and add in, uh, extra interest into the corners of my eyes. And I'm gonna kinda just graze the outside of where my shadow line is and meet that towards my transition line that I created earlier. And that's just gonna add more light and dimension. And because I'm using a smaller brush that doesn't grab as much product, you can see that I'm going from the corner of my eyes and then it just follows it slightly up until it ends into that transition and the metallics. Gina's asking how you get the soft white look under your eyes. <laughs> Gina, it's a lot of products. Uh, I started my day today, no kidding. I, um, 
Over the weekend, we went to New York to see some friends, and then yesterday I made a delicious dinner, but I'll tell you, it was about a pound of salt that I added uh, to our dinner, and I um, was making crab cakes and potatoes, and I woke up this morning and I felt so dehydrated in my skin. I don't think I drank enough water, it was a lot of Diet Coke, a lot of lemonade, just not good. So this morning I woke up, washed my face, used my Clarisonic, and then I put on the 24 karat gold Peter Thomas Roth eye patches. Those things are delightful. Sometimes I feel like, especially with the weather, the skin underneath your eyes just takes on a different texture and it's moody. That's a complete revival. It's got great hydration properties as well as 24 karat gold in it. I feel like it gets back the light properties that your under eye should have. Um, and so I did that, put on some moisturizer, and then I used Tarte's Shape Tape Concealer, and then just dusted a little powder on. So that's what I did. And I always go one shade lighter on my concealer. Not much, but I don't want it to look doll-ish, but I blend it out into my foundation so that it looks more natural. And by the way, I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. And if for some reason you put too much, just blend it out with your fingers. Sometimes your fingers are your best tools. Great questions. Again, guys, Makeup Monday, talking tutorials, what's trending in the world of beauty, and trying it out live for you every Monday around 4-ish. Or ish. Head here, but will you use a wire or just mascara with I'm so glad that you asked. So, uh, we are, so first of all, before I answer your question about what kind of liner or mascara, I want you guys to see a close-up of this metallic eye because I want you to see that it's not too shimmery. It is one that's still very stately. It's got a lot of dimension in it, and it's got great colors for you to enjoy for the fall season. So I'm gonna close my eyes. And that's from Mars, sorry. Hi, Mars. Okay, two seconds. So I'm gonna turn my head just so you can see all the places that I put shadow. And by the way, I chose because since I had foundation on, I put, you know, when I adjusted my foundation on, I put it underneath my brow bone. I didn't feel like I needed to put any shadow up here. And I don't really think you should either, because one of the things that we love about metallic eyes is it's, it's really a story from here to here. It's not necessarily all the way up for all of us regular girls. Supermodel is a different story, but even then, it's only, it's only a few minutes if that's important. You see, so lots of different colors, and I'll recap everything. Uh, for today, I grabbed a Bobbi Brown liner, and this one is in Blackout. It's a pencil, but it's a gel formula. And I personally really like pencils. I feel like I have more control. I would say if you're somebody that is newer to eyeliner or newer to different styles of eyeliner, always start with a pencil. Liquid and door brushes take a little more work, but what's nice about this one is it's incredibly pigmented. And for this look, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna tight line underneath my lashes, and then I am just gonna build a soft and subtle line that goes across. So I'm not gonna do any cat eyes because I think when it comes to the lashes and liner, it should be defined, but it shouldn't be the statement piece of this little sitch that we've got going on. So, I'm gonna line my eyes, and tight lining, it's, I'll say it, it's like tickle torture. It feels so weird the first time that you do it, and honestly, every time I'm like, ooh, I don't know, it tickles a little bit, but it's worth it. It fills in all the gaps from your lashes, and it takes about two seconds. So as you can see right here, I'm going all the way up to the lash line. all the way over. Whew. All right, so can you see the difference already? You can stop here if you want to, because for some of us, depending on your last, uh, last lash situation, if you have sparse lashes, you will see that this will look like a fuller line, which is really nice. And if you have sparse lashes, but long lashes, you're gonna really like the mascara that we have coming up, but you can kind of have your lash be a part of the story as well. I have a lot of longer lashes, but they are finer in texture. So because of that, I'm gonna do just a really simple, clean line right at the top to accentuate this. Tracy's asking what liner is that? She missed it. 
Oh, here I'll show you. Uh, the liner is Blackout, and it's the Long Wear Waterproof Eyeliner. So, there you go. Actually, let me turn it up. That way you can see it. And I like this one because, as you can see, the size of the gel pencil that's underneath here, it gives you the ability to make a really clean line, a really bigger line if you wanted to, um, just for more of like a cat eye story. But I always recommend waterproof liner, especially as we go into the season where up north we have radiators, the heat's always on, and it's so dry. I feel like my eyes always water, so I kind of just, as an insurance policy, use waterproof liner. So I'm just going to take light strokes. And by the way, I have never been able to do my eyeliner without pulling my skin taut. I'd like to tell you not to do it. It's impossible for me. And so here's another tip that I will give you. If for some reason you find yourself not creating a perfect line when it comes to your eyeshadow. Grab a smaller brush. Um, I actually don't have one here, but grab a smaller brush that will allow you, oh, here we go. This is an old school one from Tarte, and if I ever lost it, I don't know where my life would go. So grab a brush like this, and then just blend it out. And you'll see that you'll be able to create a straight line again, because not everybody has, you know, perfect liner technique or if you're trying it out for the first time, especially when, you know, color like blackout and you think, oh, is it unforgiving? Grab a brush like that and then for the, for the gal that asked the question about smoky eye, you can blend out your liner to be smoky or it'll just help you create a more finite line. So I'm going to go underneath the other eye. And by the way, one of my favorite things as to why we do this live is you can see real time how long it's going to take. I love Instagram tutorials and I, I love, you know, the minute long recap, but you're like, how long is that going to take me to do? So this way, you kind of get a better idea of if it's a trend you want to try. You know what, I've been using Tula the Day and Night Hydrating Cream, and my skin really seems to drink it up. So I'm loving that right now. And I also love the um, marine oil from Elemis. Really good stuff. All right, so I again am just putting this in my waterline, and remember, it's waterproof, so it shouldn't move. So while kind of far away right now, you're thinking, ooh, is that a smoky eye? It's actually a metallic eye. And we'll show you close-ups of that in just a moment. But before I put mascara on, this would be my daytime version of a smoky eye. And you could do this at nighttime too. I love makeup, so I'm not afraid to play around with it. But I want to show you how you can take it up a notch and incorporate that look of glossy eyes into metallic eyes. So this is the Coconut Sheer Oil from Kupari. And I could not be more obsessed with this stuff. It is so hydrating. It's a great little serum step. And you can put it all over your body, which is awesome. 100% uh, organic coconut oil, too, so I don't feel bad about putting it anywhere. I just took a little drop on my hand. You probably can't even see it. But I'm going to apply it to my lids where I put the metallic eyeshadow just to make it a little more pronounced. So basically, I'm going to just tap that in. And you may need more or less, but start off with a little, because you don't want to have to go back and redo your shadow. Just tapping it on the lid. And also, because you're using waterproof mascara, you don't have to worry about it budging your Bobbi Brown eyeliner. All right, so I think that's probably pretty good on this side, but do you see the difference? So I'll close both my eyes. This one's a little more pronounced. It's kind of incorporating that glossiness that we loved from the summer, but now you get to play around with it in your favorite colors. Elaine's asking what your nail polish is. My nail polish is Lincoln Park After Dark from OPI. 
best shade on the planet. Happy October. That's how I know it's fall when I've completely transitioned into the moody Lincoln Park After Dark. And Kelly, our social gal, agrees. Everyone wears Lincoln Park After Dark. Everyone does. You're like, I know what shade that is. It's on my toes right now. Oh, it's on my toes too. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. All right, the other reason why I pat the oil into my eyeshadow, I don't know if you saw on the other side, but I had like a little carryover. You can just blend it out with your fingers as well. So really easy. Lisa wants to know if that will make your mascara run. It will not? Okay, so Lisa wants to know, can they hear like, can they hear you ask the question? I just don't bit, want you yeah. to ask the question twice and be like, please stop talking about questions. Um, so no, this will not make your mascara run and I'll tell you why. I haven't put on mascara. So if you decide to use any of your favorite natural oils, whatnot, to make this a glossier metallic eye, put your eyeliner on first and that's why you'll use a waterproof eyeliner and then mascara will be the last step for your eyes. So I'm gonna use the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye mascara and I'll open this up I love the brush because to me it's the perfect balance of fluffy but also extremely detailed to kind of just grab every lash which that's the point of mascara but you'd be surprised some are more specific than that so real quick just looking at my eyes loving the way that they turned out you see the rosiness you see the bronziness you see all the different layers and how I'm gonna finish this off is of course just adding a touch of mascara. My favorite question to ask on Beauty IQ when we're talking about mascara, specifically with all the different guests that we have, is what is the most coats of mascara you've ever put on? And I'll ask you that on Facebook right now since we've got the smoky eye. What can you say in the circle of trust that is broadcast live? And if it's really good, I'll say your name on air right now in the Facebook chat. Uh, the most I've ever done is four. So, but my lashes can easily clump together. Some people, like that I went to school with in Mississippi, could put on legit seven or eight different coats of mascara with lashes, and I'm like, you look amazing. I've never seen anything better. All right, so I chose this mascara because for those of you that are looking for a one coat wonder, and I mean a serious, show up lash one coat wonder I think this is it I'm gonna do a second coat but I love the way that this shows up all right so did you see that that is legit mascara that only Bobby Brown can give you I mean look at that one lash it is almost touching my eyebrow and that's just one coat that's the other thing that I love about this I feel like Bobby does such a great job at maximizing what you have and making it look special. And this is that kind of mascara. I'm telling you, if, you've, if you're only good for one coat, this mascara will help your lashes look incredible. And by the way, I'm still not sure of the proper like technique of how to apply mascara. Some people start from the out end, some people use their brush and push up. I am a hodgepodge of everything. Barbara says, this must be a Southern thing. Southern thing, I have no patience with mascara to keep lingering. <laughs> I feel ya. I know, that layering mascara really isn't for everybody. And it shouldn't be something that you have to do every single day. Like when I come into work, really I'm one coat of mascara. It's not really until nighttime or it's date night that I do that second coat. All right. So here is the look, all about eyes, and I'm going to put on just a little bit of blush that I wanted you to see. It makes my eye color a little brighter, the whites of my eyes a little brighter, and yet you can definitely see when you look at me, this is the statement for makeup. It's all about metallic eyes, a little bit of liner, a little bit of glossiness, but truly, when you 
do this at home, you still get to use your favorite foundation, you still get to use your favorite blush, and I'm gonna touch that up just because it's a little hot in here. That would be a little more matte. I'm using my favorite confidence powder from Tarte. So I'm just gonna dust. Before we wrap up, could you do a quick recap of everything you used? We have a few fans that joined us late and they're interested to know what you did. Absolutely. I, um, by the way, yes, I will recap everything. By the way, I still put powder on my lips as my primer. There are probably people out there that are makeup artists freaking out and be like, what are you doing? I swear by it. I love it. All right. So let me grab, here's an It Cosmetics brush. So I'm going to grab the Nude Peach. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on my cheeks just to make them a little rosy. A little on the corner of my temple. And I learned this from Laura Geller, kind of just inverts the cheeks and makes everything blend in naturally. All right, so there's that. And by the way, I used a new peach with my It Cosmetics angled brush. Use that for everything. And then last but not least, I'm gonna do my lip. And I picked two lip colors. This is going to be your sand wash pink, and then this is your brownie. So I've been, as Mar knows in the chat, obsessed with ombre my lips, and while that seems like a little much, I picked two colors to go really close together, just so you can see how to do it at home. So I'm gonna take the darker shade, which is the brownie. I'm gonna line my lips. Mom's here in the Hi, Mom! She's at home. It's a rainy day. She's like, what are you doing today? I was like, Metallic Eyes, what are you doing? She's like, not much. <laughs> it's raining. <laughs> All right. So, as you can see, I'm just kind of taking this like three quarters of the way down on my lip, and I'm just going to fill in with the lighter shade, which is the Sand Wash Pink, right in the center. It's not a hugely noticeable difference, but it's a lot of fun that you can have in reinventing some of your lip colors that you have at home. So, what would you guys like me to do? Would you like to see the overall look first, or do you want to see the products and recap? Group time decision. There's actually like six, nope, just four of us. Uh, nope, five. Five of us here in the PDIQ social suite, and so I'm gonna take a group vote. Do you want to recap first, or do you want to see colors up front? Colors? Okay, cool. All right, so here's the story on Metallic Eyes, courtesy of Bobbi Brown. She's got amazing pigments in her collection, and if you click that link that's above, it'll take you to the Bobbi Brown shop. And basically, I used two different metallics along with a transition shade to achieve these eyes. You can stop there, and it's a little more of a mattified look, but I wanted to go just a step up nighttime fallish and use the glossiness that I saw as a trend over the summer and really bring out the metallic shimmers and colors that you're seeing. So I'm just gonna turn to the side. I used Bobbi Brown blush and lipstick as well. And just a little bit of liner because I wanted the eyeshadow to be the focus. All right, so real quick, I used, of course, my Tarte Confidence Powder, which has a beautiful mattifying property to it, but it doesn't swallow the luster of your face too much. And then how I started is with my transitions. I used the Wheat Shade, which is right here, and you use that just above the crease so that you have a buildable layer that's a medium between underneath your brow bone and then how dark you go with your liner by your lashes. I also used, after I filled in with my metallics, just the wheat shade that you see right here to lighten it up a little bit and blend more in. So this is your taupe, and then this is your wheat for your transition shades. After that, I layered with the darker metal, or after that, I skipped a step. I took a Bobbi Brown uh, blush, and then right in the center of my lid, beneath the transition shade, I blended that out so I would have more of a true rosy color underneath the metallics so that would help the dimension and kind of bring out those as well. After that, across my entire lid, I took the cognac shade and blended it out from each corner 
and then only let it go to my lid. I love this color because it is a rich brown, but it's got aubergine uh, tones underneath it, and it's really dimensional. I think if you don't know how to build your eyeshadow, this is a great color that looks like it's multi-layered while only being single use, which is great. After I did that, in the center, I used the brown sugar from Bravi Brown just to bring out a little more and kind of get a softer, focused, brighter metallic. And I think that tied in the color really well with the tawny blush as well as the brown sugar. So here, or excuse me, this is burnt sugar, excuse me. And then last but not least, how I intensified, oh, by the way, I used the Bobbi Brown liner. It's waterproof. It's called the Long Wear uh, Liner, which is really nice going into where you have a ton of heat and it's really drying on your skin, usually your eyes start to water whether you know it or not. And so this just kind of makes sure that it won't go anywhere. How I took it up a notch, which this could have been an easy daytime look, could have been a nighttime look, but if you wanted more focus on the metallics, I just took a natural oil. This one's from Kopari, and on my fingertips, dotted it along my lid so that it brought out more of that burnt sugar color with the metallics and I tied it in a little bit with some Tarte highlighter. So I'll show you that. And for the Tarte highlighter, I used Candlelight, which is right there. Mascara, awesome. This is the Smoky Eye Mascara, and if you're somebody who needs a one coat wonder, this is absolutely brilliant. So I would encourage you, if you don't have a lot of time, this is one to go through. It grabs every single lash and adds volume as well. And then the last piece of it, I put on a little blush in Nude Peach from Bobbi Brown. And then I ombre my lips with two very similar looking colors on the color spectrum. This is Brownie, which is the outer shade that I look, uh, used. And then to blend it all together, Sand Wash Pink. All right. So I think that's it. I think I covered all the colors that I used. It looks like a complete disaster in here, which means must have been a success. I hope that you enjoy chatting about the metallic eye trend, and I certainly thank all of you for all of your amazing questions. We will see you back next Monday. Brand new topic of conversation. And of course, while you spend your last few minutes working, click on that link. It'll take you to the Bobby Brown landing page where you can see all of these great metallic eyeshadows. Until later on when I see you at 8 p.m., have a great rest of the day, beauties. Bye.